Typically when I'm working on a project that requires a lot of wiring, I tend to edit that part out because I feel like that's not exactly the most interesting stuff you guys could watch. But doing that, I feel like I've kind of done you guys a disservice in that I've never actually recorded myself wiring something up. So here I'm going to show you guys the basics of how to wire things up. Hopefully this information is going to benefit you guys in some way. It'll teach you something that you were looking for here today. So let's get started. Typically when I'm working on some sort of project that requires wiring, I'm going to use a variety of different tools. Some of them expensive, some of them are cheap, but it doesn't really matter. They all kind of accomplish what they need to accomplish individually. And when you put them all together, they do the job for sure. But for a beginner, I don't actually recommend buying any of these just because these are expensive. These aren't very good. So what I think you should do, if you're just going to do a little bit of wiring, I think you should go with the set that has a little bit of everything that you need that the tool itself is able to do most of what you're looking for and it's gonna get you started in this. I don't think you should spend a whole lot of money if you're just gonna work on one project and put everything in a drawer. So the tool itself, it has a couple different functions. It uh, has wire cutters that don't work very well. It has wire strippers that don't work very well. And really the big deal with these is they're able to crimp wires. They're also technically supposed to be able to trim off hardware. So if you put a screw inside of here, an 832 screw, when you close it down, it's supposed to be able to shear those off. It doesn't do a very good job. Even a good tool doesn't do a very good job. So we don't use those a whole lot unless you're in a pinch really. So the cutters on these are actually not that bad. They cut wire pretty well, but the strippers are awful. Typically when I'm using a good set of wire strippers, I'll actually start with a smaller size. So I'll use this size to actually cut the insulation, and then I'll go the next size up to remove it. So sometimes you even have to do that with expensive ones, so don't let that discourage you too much that you have to do it with these ones. If you don't go that route, it's really just not going to work. They're just not very good. But for 8 bucks for the whole set, including terminations, you're still pretty good. Definitely one of the things you want to consider before you decide how you're going to attach something is how permanent you want it to be. So a lot of people when they're doing a real temporary connection, they tend to use electrical tape, which is probably the most vulgar way you can make an attachment. It works, but it's just not one of the pretty things I like to see in life. So in terms of temporary connections, by far my favorite way to do it is wire nuts. After you manage to get the insulation off of the wire, I like to give it a good little twist and that prevents things from fraying when you go to put it in whatever type of connector you're putting it into. When you're using wire nuts, I tend to give them a pre-twist. So you individually twist the wires and then you twist the two wires together and then you put the wire nut on and it just screws right on. And the reason this works is there's a little bit of metal at the bottom of that wire nut and it actually threads the two wires together so they're actually in there pretty good. And the best part about this is it's already insulated so you don't have to do anything additionally to protect this from anything touching it. So any metal can contact this and you're not going to cause any problems. And you're able to just unscrew it and pull the wires apart. So that's why if you're going to do something temporary, wire nuts are the way to go. This stuff is not my favorite. It works, but I do not prefer it for that type of application. So if you're looking for something that's a little bit more permanent than that, you can definitely use butt splices. That's one of the more common things you're going to see. The way butt splices work is there's actually metal inside of this tube. And so what you want to do is you basically want to have the wires touching each other in the middle of that metal tube. So you insert them as far as you can on each side. And then you use the crimping tool to compress down on that metal inside of there and it grabs the wire really tightly and prevents it from coming loose. Typically you want to do one at a time. And so if you're using a blue connector, you want to use the blue part of the tool. That's a rough guideline. It typically works out pretty well. And you want to make sure that you're on the metal because not all of the butt splice has metal in it. So you want to definitely make sure you're on the metal and that you're actually crimping it. And you just give it a good healthy crimp. And you definitely want to pull on it after you're done to make sure that's actually on there really, really tight. And so that's how you know you have a good crimp. And then you can go ahead and do the other one.
And butt splices can be used in all different types of applications. And they're permanent. They're a very good connection. So that's why you see them pretty much everywhere you go. And if you have the opportunity, this is a very good route to go. One of the other options you have for attaching wire is solder. I don't know why, it's one of my favorites. It doesn't make sense because it's the most work out of the options we've talked about so far. But something about it I like, I don't really know what it is. So I got a really crappy old soldering iron and we're gonna give this a shot. Typically you wanna start by putting a little bit of solder on the tip. Also you typically like to have it clean, but as you can see, this one's so old it doesn't really get clean anymore, so that doesn't really work, but it should still do the job. So you want to get the wire nice and hot, and as it gets hot, the solder is going to soak up into it. And as that cools, the solder is going to hold the two wires together. That's not very clean. I think I can clean it up a little bit. Well, and that should do the job nicely. The trouble with soldered on connections is unlike wire nuts or any kind of crimp connection, it's not insulated at all. And that's the exact opposite of what you're looking for. So what you want to do is get some heat shrink tubing, which you can get anywhere you get the rest of this electrical stuff, and you slip it over the connection. And you want the connection to be roughly in the middle of the heat shrink tubing. And you can use a heat gun, you can use a match, you can use a lighter. If you're going to be going those routes, you definitely want to be careful with fire. Just a disclaimer. And in this case, I'm going to be using my wife's hair dryer. And now it is completely insulated. And not only that, that heat shrink is on there really well and it is not going to come off. So you're not in any danger of that coming apart and arcing against something else. So again, we have a really secure connection. Another type of termination you're typically going to see is going to be a spade connector or a ring terminal. And these are crimp on just like butt splices, but they're also removable. And so the type of application you would typically see these so for a female spade connector, you'd see that on a relay because obviously you're able to just solder directly onto these terminals. The problem is it's going to be really messy and then it's going to be a lot more difficult to remove them. But when you use a spade connector like this, you're able to just go ahead and slip it right off. And the application where you would typically see a ring terminal is on a switch or something where you have to screw directly down to the terminal. That ring is what the screw goes through to attach it. And like I was saying, the way you're able to put the wire through is just like on a butt connector. You just want to make sure that there's a tiny bit of wire poking out the end. And you want to make sure you're biting down on the metal, actually grabbing down on the wire. And if you bottom out the tool, you're usually going to get a pretty good crimp out of the deal. Looks good to me. Now, if you're one of my returning subscribers, I got to apologize. You probably thought that was a really boring video, but like I was saying before, that's the whole reason why I typically edit wiring out. But I wanted this to be a resource for you guys, anybody who might actually benefit from knowing this stuff, because I realize that not everybody has the same knowledge base. And so assuming that you guys know how to wire stuff like this is probably a bit of a reach, but I think you guys are smarter than you think you are, so I mean, even if you don't know all the little tricks that I know, you probably have a pretty good grasp of all the stuff that I'm doing. You just don't have the same experience that I do. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, which is probably a stretch. And uh, thanks for doing your part to help make this world a strange place.